Alex, hi, how are you doing? Um, very well, thank you. Thank you for having me on here. It's awesome to meet you. Well, you're a first insofar as I've never spoken directly to a photographer, a pure, talented, skilled, creative photographer. So <laughs> it's going to be a fascinating conversation. And I tell you something, the timing could not be spookily better. I'm going yeah. to buy my first camera this week, my first ever camera. I've never touched one. <laughs> and I'm buying a Canon 90D from another yeah. creator that I interviewed. He had one spare, so I'm going to go off and meet him this week. I'm going to buy my first camera, so my timing is well, better. And I'm really enjoying <laughs> photography. It's cool, isn't it? It is. It is lovely, and it, it has kept me going for longer than I get to remember. <laughs> and, and welcome to the fold. You know. Well, yes, I'm sure I'll be using a lot of your tutorials over the coming months. <laughs> Christmas is going to be busy, I'm sure. But let, let's talk about you then. So clearly, photography was something that appealed to you years ago. What was it that drew you to photography? Because I'm guessing it was prior to the camera phone being in our pockets all of the time. So what was it that drew you to photography? In a photography? long time ago. Um, I'd always had like a bit of an interest from my dad and my grandfather on my mum's side. They were both quite keen on photography as, as, as a you know, little kind of a hobby thing. And, and they took some time to explain things to me about how to take pictures. And, and dad had an old Canon A1, which he would let me muck around with him, he took the time to sort of explain the bits and bobs. And, and, and it was always just kind of like there on the back burner. Like it was never something I didn't, you know, and it was like, oh, I don't want to do this. Um, and then, uh, long story short, I, my marks at school were appalling. Like I was a very, <laughs> I was a very bad student at school. And this was in the, um, uh, where was this? This is the early nineties in South Africa when military service was still uh, oh, so you were born, born and brought up in South I, Africa? I was born in the UK, but we moved to South Africa. Right. And um, hence where the house of it comes from. It's like a colloquial sort of thing. And um, yeah, so I kind of, I looked around. One of the options rather than going to the army, which I didn't really fancy, was to go to, into some sort of tertiary education. Uh, and because my marks were so poor, I, my options were somewhat limited. And it turned out that photography, which again, I'd never even considered as a career, didn't require any specific marks. They, they just kind of had some suggestions about that. So I submitted a portfolio and things went for a couple of interviews. Uh, I think probably made a complete fool of myself, but, but for some reason they accepted me and, um, and I, I merrily chipped off Victoria Tech photo school, um, three years and, and discovered that what was actually just something enjoyable had turned into something I was actually reasonably, I thought at the time, um, uh, talented at. Um, and and it, sort of just, it sort of just went from there, really. It, it, you know, being at photo school opened so many doors photographically that I'd never really considered going through. Um, and, and fast forward, you know, almost 30 years and, uh, and here we are. So it's one of those instances where it almost found you rather than the other way around. You kind of felt there was some calling, but once you started to get some education and, and got into it more, you really, obviously it found you then. Yeah. So basically it was, it started off with my dad, you know, me just taking pictures with him and, and kind of learning little bits. And then when I realized that I, I, that was an option to not do something else. And I started taking a little bit more seriously. Then I started buying, uh, I think it was, uh, practical photography or you know these magazines that were around back in the day and i would sort of copy things and and that was kind of my my foundation of photography until i got to photo school mm -hmm. and then it was very different in so much as you know people were talking about it in a far more i won't say serious way but a far more focused way you know and and that kind of really just i went do you know i actually really enjoy this i like the process because, it, of course, it is a very, very technical skill. Everyone now yeah. thinks because they've got a camera phone, they're a photographer. But a, being a photographer, there's a, a well, my, my father was a photographer, so I kind of, unfortunately, I didn't okay. ever talk to him about it. But I saw yeah. what went into it. And I know it's a very, very technical game. I mean, everything about it has to be, there's a reason for everything you do, isn't it? Every setting on the camera, oh, yeah. there is a reason. So presumably that was what your formal education was it it was, yeah. So we, we, it was broken down into uh, various classes. So we had techniques. So that was kind of um, things like using shutter speed, aperture, uh, various 
things like that. And then theory, which was more about how film worked, how chemicals interacted with each other, you know, how they, what, a fi what film was actually made of. Mm. So things of, of, of that um, and how different processing times would give you different results. We also did visual communication, which is something that I, I, I feel is a completely overlooked aspect to photography today, learning how to communicate with, with images, mm -hmm. uh, not just from a compositional point of view, but, but all those sort of things that <laughs> there are millions of now YouTube videos sort of just scratching the surface on. And, um, and that, was, that was kind of it. And then obviously practical work. So, so it, was, it was quite a lot. It was quite in, in, intense and quite involved. Um, you know, that, that's, and did it prepare you for a life as a professional? Is that, was that the reason for the course? It, I, I, it, it, the course really it was a three year course was, I think, designed to give you the, the foundation to be a good assistant mm -hmm. that you could go off and you would then take those skills and become an assistant to, an, to a working professional. Uh, you know, so while we were capable of, of doing obviously work to a standard by ourselves, the focus was definitely that, that you would go through this course, specialize in a particular field and then go work for somebody. So we didn't do anything about marketing. We didn't do anything about business or, you know, the actual process of running photography. Mm -hmm. it, that was if you were going to, you learn that from somebody else. Um, you know, they just switch out to take pictures. So, so it's almost serving as a, getting you ready for an apprenticeship. Yeah. I would have thought of something in, in that nature. There were some people who went and did their own thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, I kind of did some bits and bobs and, but for the most part, yeah, it was, you went and you worked for somebody. And of course this, this is back in the mid nineties. Um, and, and up until that point, I distinctly remember at the, when we did like an open day to go and visit the photo school. They said that everybody who completed third year got given a placement or well, there were placements for them. Right. By the time I got to third year, that had somewhat changed. <laughs> Timing. Um, so in that space of four years, um, there were very few placements. And obviously the whole landscape in, in, in photography now has completely changed. Um, mm. You know, you can talk to a working profession now. They'd be like, why would I even consider giving somebody else a chance at stealing my work? <laughs> so, so well, your life's a professional we're going to get onto in just a little bit, but how did your early career progress then? How did you end up working for somebody? Is that the route you took? Um, yeah, I, I did. Um, he says, yeah. Um, I ended up doing what a lot of people did, which was going to schools photography um, and, and then weddings on a weekend. So you would kind of, I, I, I spent some time at a, a company, a bridge up in Pretoria. And then I think in memory of there's probably about 15, maybe 20 photographers in this studio. So, so we would go off and, and photograph schools mm -hmm. um, mostly, um, uh, during the week and then during the weekends, um, uh, it would be weddings. So each photographer would go off and shoot a wedding. Um, so that, that was kind of a bit, you know, that that's a bit more production line. And there were some other things in there. There was, you know, there's a bit of commercial, but nothing too much. So it was really kind of just point and shoot sort of things. There was no real, uh, you know, freedom to, to do the sort of photography that you wanted. Um, I did do some work with, with a commercial photographer where we were doing, um, things like press launches, um, you know, for, for cars and what have you. And of course this being sort of pre-digital, a press launch involved me sitting in the dark room um, for like three days, making 800 prints of the same image. <laughs> Which now, is, uh, this is know, something I was going to talk to you about because obviously you yeah. were working on the old substrate of film. You've, you've straddled and transitioned this huge once in a lifetime movement from to film, physical over to digital. Yeah. And I don't know if it's a naive um, question to ask. Is there a better? Is there something you prefer? Or are there strengths? To, do you still work with film? Are there reasons for it? Um, I haven't. I haven't shot any film for for a few years, um, uh, and and certainly mm. I haven't shot any film in anger, as it were, uh, to all. Oh. In fact, I I can't even remember the last time. Right, it's it's that long ago. Um, yeah, it was a weird thing because digital was coming in and we did mm -hmm. work. We did have access to digital stuff at photo school, not cameras, but 
scanners and, and Photoshop. Uh, I think it was Photoshop. Um, or something. So it was all sort of film based anyway. Mm. Uh, I, I, I was never a great, ex I was never really good at printing uh, in, in either color or, or black and white. So Photoshop, especially lastly, once layers and stuff came in and, and I was a bit okay with it, that enabled me to actually make prints and you know, images had the way that I wanted them to look. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it was very beneficial in, in that regard. Um, they're just, I think they're just two different things. I miss the organic process and the organic feel of film. I, I miss the magic, the alchemy. I think, you know, a friend of mine, Stephen Taylor up, up north, he does a program in Scotland. You know, he talked about the alchemy, this idea mm -hmm. of when you put the film into the camera and then you've loaded it into a, into a, a, a tank. And, and then those images came out and that, you know, that was something that is magical. And I think that's been lost a little bit in, in digital. Um, I would like to shoot digital again. I've not digital, I've filmed rather. Film again. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the process of remaking a studio, or making a studio here at home. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things I would like to try again is, is shooting large format. So four by five. It's almost sheets. like. Similar to the uh, old vinyl and CD thing, uh, I can remember the smell of the developer and the fixer in my dad's dark room. He had a separate dark room just to one side of the house. And I remember the ball rail hanging up with loads of prints drying. And it's very emotive again, isn't it, film? It has that romance to it. It, it does. I mean, that, that was one of the things. I, I, I've always had this thing of like working in the dark. <laughs> I, worked as a, I worked in the theater um, when I was a student as well. So that was mm -hmm. in the dark and then obviously dark things are dark. Um, I, yeah, I do miss that. There's a, there's a lot of tactile-ness that goes on with it. And, and it felt, certainly for me, a far easier, uh, a far more relaxed process than, say, being on Photoshop. Um, mm. You know, being in a dark room, or oh, that having seen the office, I wasn't a great printer. But everything, those little steps and, and the feeling that you were hands on with it, um, that, yeah, so that's all kind of missing. Um, but having said that, when I got a, a tablet, you know, like a little tablet and a stylus or for editing, processing images, um, that brought some of that back. Um, yeah, because all of a sudden it was kind of, it was something I was a bit more involved you know, with them. using like a like a pen rather than a mm. mouse mm. and i think anybody who uses tablets in their photographic work probably would recognize that and by tablets i mean like a wacom tablet rather that's right yeah <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, a lot of photographers thing. work on those i understand don't they most most photographers seem to edit with a tablet of some kind yeah i, I found when i'm when i changed that it took me about a week um just to get used to the, the process um but having once i did it it made everything so much quicker it made everything so much more fluid and um, dodging and burning felt a little bit more uh, responsive. All the you know all these sorts of things. So yeah, so so digital film or what I sort of tend to be either like a wet dark room. Mm -hmm. they they're pros and cons to each, you know. And 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 anybody who sort of sits there and goes, oh, it was all so much better back in the day. I think is is somewhat mired. Um, in the past, you know, he's, even Ansel Adams, uh, I was watching a thing the other day, you know, he was, because uh, he was obviously around at the, at the, the beginnings and the stirrings of, of digital. And he was really enthusiastic about, you know, the possibilities that, that could be afforded. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's there. I don't think there's any single one correct answer to that. So as your career began to develop, did you niche down at any point? Did you decide this was the route you're going to do? Was it product photography or portrait photography? Um, no, not really. <laughs> I just kind of, I did pretty much whatever came along. Um, I, I, I uh, it was mostly commercial work. Mm -hmm. So things like images for brochures and, and, you know, things of that nature, nothing really kiddie orientated. So I mean, like family portraits and stuff mm -hmm. that was all. In those days, and this is, this is again, this is a hugely gross generalization, so there's no we should take offense of it, but we never did anything like that at photo school. Anything that was family portrait orientated was something that you did if you couldn't hack it as a pro. Yeah, I'm with you. 
yeah. um, which, which is a very snooty way of looking at things. But it was that kind of, so we never touched any of that mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So I already opted. I did a lot of that later on. Um, but now to begin with, it was really whatever came along. Um, you know, I, I didn't have any connection because after, you know, the school stuff, I'm going to do my own things. So it was really kind of, as a sophomore, you know, the friends of the parents and, and, and word of mouth. And you know, yeah. yeah. So yeah. people, you get connections, I, you know, in the theaters, so I would do some stuff in the theater, like headshots for, for people. So it was really just kind of, yeah, it was whatever crossed my door. And were you still working in South Africa in the early yeah, part yeah, of your career? Yeah. Still less, yeah. Yeah. And then and, the yeah, so and so as as things moved along then, did you decide that you preferred any I know you said that the the, the, uni, the college university formal education yeah. didn't prepare yeah. you for the, the, the family portraits and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But did you find you were preferring any kind of shoots? Now I was gonna to talk to you also about the life of a photographer, because I think that could be quite an interesting um, avenue to wander down. I, I'd always wanted, I, I think I started off with this broad idea that I wanted to be a photojournalist. Um, and, and that kind of, I realized very quickly, I, I wasn't really cut out for that sort of thing. And, mm -hmm. and as much as I enjoyed photographing it, it wasn't really something that, that connected with me personally I, I was more you know i was young and into music and, and being at art school stuff so the so idea of like photographing for you know q magazine or then new musical express or something like mm. that that appealed to me so this is a period of like steve double and um other names that fit uh, that completely escaped me right now but it was it was an exciting time it was brett Popp and all that sort of stuff and and so the, the imagery was quite exciting and, and but before you, you know, being in south africa those bands didn't exist there was a, obviously a local music scene, mm. um, but there wasn't any outlet really to spend or to, to make money through that. So, so the work that I did do in that regard was more for myself, um, right. Right. you know, um, so it was just kind of thing. Um, I just, I kind of, I went to, it was anything that I sort of went, oh, I enjoy this more than anything else. I preferred photographing things uh, that I didn't need to talk to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, doesn't like um, working in the dark, doesn't like talking to people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I, despite the fact that I specialize in portraiture at, at photo school, um, I, at that point had a real, uh, a real confidence issue with talking to people. Um, so, um, uh, which obviously will surface again uh, later in that conversation. Um, but it was just, yeah, so it was really kind of, I was doing a bit of this and a bit of that, um, things that didn't talk to me. And so basically things I could photograph without having to interact with stuff. So product talk mm. kind of, you know, falls into that, um, you know, quite nicely. And then I just, you know, over time I sort of went, okay, well, I should like to go off and travel around a bit. So in, in 2000, I sort of, um, I just, I moved back to the UK on a whim, um, mm. and spent a couple of years just sort of away from photography, just photographing for myself so not really you know, just doing i suppose a, a delayed gap here kind of thing now i've had the chance to work with a couple of photographers on shoots in my other life as a graphic designer on occasion i've had reason to go on on a set and see what they're doing it looks like it can be fairly stressful because you kind of there for that one day those few hours and you've got to get it right you haven't got the opportunity for a second chance if you don't capture what you need there and then yeah, there's, it's, because one of the big things is, you know, people say, oh, I'm going to, if I'm a photographer, um, I'm doing things that I love, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, it must be so great to take pictures and be paid for it. And it is that the first time I saw my name as, as byline, I was, I was thrilled. I was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, um, it was, it was in Burden magazine, which is like a knitting magazine. <laughs> so it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't exactly uh, uh, super, super highlights and things. But what we were finding is that what I found is that, yeah, you have to please so many people. You've got so many, uh, so many balls you need to be juggling at the same time. So you need to kind of sit there and go, oh, you know, I've got, uh, I've got an art director or I've got a client or I've got these, all these people, they, they all have their own ideas. You have your own idea that you want to do, you know, but so you have to 
make sure everybody's okay. And they are looking to you to make it okay. Because that's why they've hired you. you know, to Absolutely. It fulfills yeah. their vision. Um, and that's where having at least a solid technical background of understanding how all these things work makes life a lot easier because you're not having to sit and refer to a, a, a manual or something to try and figure out how to mm. correct things or change things up or what have you. Um, so it, is, it can be quite stressful, especially in those days, because of course, despite, you know, without even, you know, with Polaroid, um, uh, you know, Polaroid uh, proofs, mm. you know, since yeah. Polaroid, little rushes used to get, it, right? Yeah. 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 There, yeah. There's, there was no way of checking things. Um, and, and of course, you know, film can behave interestingly. Um, I remember I did a, um, uh, it was like a, like a, 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 a press launch thing for a, a just some sort of uh, thing, a local shopping malls. And there was a reasonably famous um, person there in, in, of course, because this is the nineties, in some sort of velvet jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> and when the pictures came back, it was like, hang on. So it was like a kind of a weird violet-y sort of dress. And it came back and it was yellow. Like, like kind of like, like properly yellow. And I was like, why well, this is very weird. Because if, you know, film, sometimes there's this, there's little bits of color that don't register on the film. And, and that, you know, that particular just happened to touch that part where it just, the film didn't want to know about it. So, so then you have to kind of explain to people why this person's outfit is not Representing as it was then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not the same. It was not my fault. <laughs> it's the same. Um, anyway, so those are kind of, you know, little, little bits of both. But yeah, you always kind of seem to be juggling with, with people's um, expectations. Expectations. Yeah. yeah. And, and if it's looking at the modern workflow now, then in the digital workflow, presumably you would be on a set if you were out on location. You would be able to show them yeah. on a Mac or a screen, right, this is what we're shooting, or you'd have a display, so they'd get a better feel of what they're going to be ending up seeing. Would that be fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think it feels like it's a more of a collaborative process mm. now um, because you could you can specifically point to things. You could say, look, we'll do this. No, we need to change it. And, and, you know, the person who's actually making the decisions can also be in there and go, okay, yeah, I'm not quite keen on that thing. Can we change it up and mm. stuff like mm. that? Um, and, and you can make sure that there aren't little things creeping in that everybody seems to overlook, you know, at, at the time. And, and I, I find that in, in certain respects, a, a lot easier sending nowadays, um, you know, uh, being able to show a, a model, you know, what, what they're doing, what, you know, how, how you'd like them to look and for them to change little bits and bobs certainly makes life a lot easier because you're, you're involving them in the process rather than mm, all being mm. you know, up here. Now, as I think I mentioned earlier on, I'm a complete novice with photography and I'm beginning to see the passion of it. I'm beginning to see the beauty of it and yeah. enjoy it. But one thing I've kind of noticed, because like anybody that wants to be, and you know, I spend ages on YouTube and we'll be talking about your huge yeah. YouTube channel in a little bit, but <laughs> it seems that it's a little bit I've learned about photographers. They seem to be... I shoot Canon, I shoot Sony, mm -hmm. Nikon. Is, it, is, is there a massive difference to these cameras? And, and what is it that makes them so, it almost seems ingrained in that particular person's professional profile that I will want to shoot Canon. I, it just seems I'm a little unwatching. Yeah, um, it's a weird thing. I'm, I'm a Canon, you know, I, I just, and only because... That was the first camera that I used, the Canon mm. A1, and and I used an A1 throughout photo school, and I I used you know my Canon stuff later on. I you know I've used medium format and and large formats, and I have photographed with Nikon's and, and Olympuses or Olympi. Um, I I think certainly in the film days, um, you know I was there was a lot of muscle memory um, mm -hmm. involved with it. And, and I found that the A1 especially had a little bit of motor drive on the bottom of the A1 and the power winder. It felt right in my hand. It, the weight was right. The size was right. Everything just felt nice. Mm. Uh, the Olympus is like, oh, tens, I think. They felt a little bit light. Mm -hmm. Like they kind of, 
Is that what you're going to do? They'll float away. Um, and, I, and I found them nicking. Um, I called them. <laughs> Nick Ken. And um, uh, I like the F2 from an aesthetic point, but I, I never liked photograph it. Mm -hmm. it. Again, it didn't feel nice. Um, um, and, and the F3s and stuff, they just felt really heavy. So for um, you, it was just as much as anything, a muscle, as you say, muscle memory and a tactility to a certain camera. You like the way it feels yeah. in your hand, it's solid, it's heavy enough, it just is robust. And puts you in a mind of doing yeah, a good it was, day's work. I wouldn't say it was robust because the A one was not exactly the most robust camera, but <laughs> it was. It was. I think something you just get used to, mm. and you know how it works. And it's just like it's like now, you know, I'm a Canon shoot, right? So Canon's architecture on their cameras is fairly standard amongst all of them. So I kind of know how to do things. But you pick up a Nikon, or you pick mm -hmm. up a, you know, like, and and it's like, how do I do this? How do I do X, Y, and Z things? And and for me, it that sort of gets in the way. You should grant it if you if you were to photograph for a month with a Nikon, you get used to it. Mm. But it just feels like it. It just it feels like it's just why should I have wasted to energy. Around. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah. But for a lot of people, they're happy to switch and change around because they want specific things. But I'm, I'm I don't photograph in a style that requires some of the technical out there things that some cameras do and some cameras don't. So I don't need to change, you know, uh, system. And of course, leading on from the camera body itself is the lenses. Again, that seems to be another huge passion point. And I, I hope I'm asking questions. I'm hoping people watch and listen to this podcast that are <laughs> venturing into photography and understand. So forgive me if some of these questions are naive, but presumably the lens almost makes the camera it's the shop window to, to the, what you're seeing. Would that be fair or not? Um, it's slightly changed. If we look back in film days, mm -hmm. obviously, um, look at that lovely expression. <laughs> <It's just laughs> it was a good stop, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, this, yeah, this, this, um, the, in the, in the film days, it didn't, you know, the camera was just a box that you put some film in, mm -hmm. you know, the film, dictated some of the quality um, and, and as did the lens. So the camera wasn't really anything special. It wasn't affecting the, the, um, the image quality. So glass was kind of important, um, you know, so having some, some decent glass on there, mm -hmm. uh, especially back then when uh, people who are who good today, like, like Tamar and Sigmund and stuff, they at, at the time were very second rate glass manufacturers you know they weren't nearly as good as they are today so there was mm -hmm. a notice difference so there was a bit more sort of snobbery around then you know mm -hmm. I, I think i would have died if i'd not had <laughs> not had canon glass uh, on my camera and and same with the nikon guys if they hadn't didn't have nickel glass on there they probably would have been upset but these days obviously the cameras do play a far bigger role in um uh, you know, in, in the quality of things, of, of the style, you know, how, how it works. But it can only capture what you're giving it, that light. So that's of why course, yeah. my, my glass does play a role. And, and it's less cut and dried now because these days, you know, obviously the quality across the board, manufacturing processes have all increased. Mm. So there isn't that vast gulf in difference that you would have seen 30, 40 years ago between a, you know, in Canon's case, just like a standard cheapo zoom and, and a, like an, a, a piece of L glass. Um, but I would say, you know, if somebody's getting into photography to invest in things, glass would be the thing to, to spend your money on. Mm. Because, a, a, you know, a, a good lens is going to outlast and retain its value a, 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 you know, camera, all these people running around and buying R fives or whatever they are these days, you know, which which are expensive. They are, and and you know, and then five years time, they're not going to be worth anything. Mm. Well, you know, relatively speaking, relatively, but, yeah, yeah. Well, but that lens that you buy, that seventy two hundred two point eight IS two or whatever, that's going to hold us. It's going to hold us value. Um, a good lens so, is always a good lens. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and it does it does make a huge difference, and, and primes especially as well. And um, you mentioned when you were back at college, there was almost this hierarchical 
a snobby thing about, you know, we don't do children's photography and sure. portraits. Bring it out on to a different context yeah. now. Mobile phone photography. Where does the professional stand on the advance of mobile phone photography? Are you pro in, in, in it? In, in what regard? Well, are you for it? In the fact that it makes everybody think they're a photographer, pretty much. And or do you think it's a good thing to be bringing this art form into people's hands? And, and I guess people like myself have found they enjoy it, taking pictures and then you realise yeah. there's a whole art form beyond it. So I just wondered if you... I, I, you're a pretty forward-thinking guy. I'm getting that from talking to you. But uh, I just wondered if you resented the fact that everybody can now take a reasonably decent picture and it's done away with the art and, the, and all the training that photographers such as you go through to achieve your art. Um, personally, I don't really mind it so much. But then again, also, I'm now, I'm now divorced from making my main living from, from selling images of, of mm -hmm. being a professional photographer. I now, you know, transition into YouTube, which is a whole other discussion. Which we're going to get on to um, just shortly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so, so I'm kind of, it doesn't really bother me. And there are times I did complain. I was like, oh, you know, and also especially dealing with, um, so I'm going to give you a break there because mm -hmm. the cat, <laughs> the cat, I guess, oh, wait. I or, can't cut so a cat I'll, video. I'll, I'm a massive cat fan myself. Can't my, can't my, my one's locked away at the moment. So, what's your cat called, by the way? Haggis. Haggis. Hello, Haggis. Yeah, he's he's a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> so if I if I I'll try to. He's he's, he's really Haggis is a cat's always welcome on any podcast of mine. Trust me. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, so I'll start that again. So. The with with the, the mobile photography, mm. you know, it, it's there because I don't have to worry about it so much. I've kind of pushed it off one side, but I do know that there are a lot of people who are a, a, a gross generalization becoming to the tail end of their careers. Mm -hmm. You know, they are people who have been around for a long time and there's and who have been working as as pro photographers since I was a student, you know, so they've had this kind of 30 or 40 years where there have been many changes that have come through. And, and like a lot of people who had a certain way of doing things and it was all done and it was all happy and it worked, they have tried to find external causes for them falling behind mm. in what have you. There's always um, something to blame that mentality. Well, it, it's a lot easier to blame the rise of the, the mobile phone or the rise of the home print or the scanner, um, you know, on why they're not going to work anymore. Mm. When, you know, I, I, my, my personal feeling is that the, the landscape has changed, the way of marketing has changed, the way that you promote yourself, what you have to do, the, you know, the, the, the efforts that you have to go to have also increased. And there are still successful photographers, you know, in, in every sort of genre. Um, you know, there was obviously the rise of AI and, and stuff like that, but that's, again, that, that's a discussion for later on. And, and I think going back to what I said about Ansel Adam and, and, and what have you, that all of these things are tools. They are ways of, of doing this. Those photographers who are complaining about the rise of digital or, you know, sort of mobile phones yeah, yeah. are quite happy about the effect or the benefit that they got from it, which is the fact that they don't have to go and process a trillion rolls of film. And they can sell things that are a lot easier. They can. So on one hand, you can't complain about the fact that it made your life easier. Mm -hmm. But also then say, but, but this should only be for us. It should only be for things. Um, and, and I just think there's a lot of interesting kind of cool things going out there. Being, you know, pushing visual imagery forward. Or mm -hmm. also, you know, say, let's say image creating forward. That is is to be welcome because you know we we need to move on. You can't just absolutely. You know, and it's like saying, is, yeah, let's just all keep on shooting portraits against model backdrops with aspidistras in the background on a on a velvet chaise lounge. You know, it, 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 yeah, technology is there to be embraced, right? And if any art form stands still, it's doing something wrong. And I've always yeah. thought if the current generation at the top of their game, isn't passing the baton on and encouraging that next generation to come through and chase their coattails and become better, then there's something wrong with that 
artist or that every art form needs to progress, doesn't it? It, it does. And, and as you were saying that, I was reminded about um, something that somebody said when I was we were saying about improving um, family dog studios, um, where they said, you know, you should always hire people who are going to be better than you. Mm. <laughs> right? which, um, you know, which, which makes sense. You want people who are going to improve and move forward. And, and I, you know, you've touched on a, on a point there, which is at the heart of why I started TPE, which is, you know, photography does need to move forward and you do need to pass on the things that, that one has picked up, you know, over time. And, and I'm by no means the most experienced photographer in the world, but, you know, not even by a long shot. But I have something to pass on to people, and, and I want that to, you know, to help improve other, just photography as a, as a whole. You know, we all benefit. You know, the rising tide lifts all boats, as, as they say. Well, that's a perfect transition, TP, the photographic guy, your, your mm -hmm. YouTube channel. You said you've kind of moved away from the jobbing world of photography and having to sell images and prints and portraits. Mm -hmm. And your focus now presumably is very much the channel, which it currently stands at 188,000 subs and growing. 138,000. Yes, yeah, 138,000, yeah. And I, I, I like the fact you've just given me like an extra 50,000. Excellent, excellent, thank you. And That's I, I'm kind you? like that, I'm kind like that. So when did you make that decision? What, what was the thought process behind it? Again, this part of your forward thinking that, right, I need a change. I want to pass on what I've got and help the next generation through. What was the thought process behind the photographic eye? Um, after we moved back to the UK permanently, my wife and I, in 2008. And, and I'd, I'd been talking to people on online forums prior to that who were reasonably uh, clued up about photography, you mm -hmm. know, the history of it, and new ones, so this mob. And, and I started off doing weddings and I opened up my portrait studio mm -hmm. and as I became more involved in, in the, um, in the, in the community of, of photographers, of photographers, working photographers, mm -hmm. it struck me that there was, there, there seemed to be, sorry, we're having a cat inter, <laughs> um, there <laughs> seems to be, yeah, Haggis is back. Hey, Haggis, come on that way. Um, there seemed to be a, as a, a, a split, there were those photographers who knew about the history and the art of photography. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily hadn't been to photo school, or whatever, but they knew about the background and it informed their images. It made, in my view, their images a little bit more interesting because they weren't just copying, they were interpreting and, and making the creation. And then there were photographers who uh, I think had come to it from someone else. I'm in IT and I quite like taking pictures, so I'm going to go and become a photographer. And they were photographing almost by, by process, you know, that they would go on a workshop and then they would see people's photographs and then they would just kind of copy them, mm -hmm. you know? And so they would do all of this. They would, they, they kind of, they knew some of the nuts and the bolts mm -hmm. in so much of it is exposures and things, but even then they were reliant quite a lot on their cameras to solve some of the issues. And, and I thought, okay, not that any photographer is better than, you know, one person is better than the other, but I thought nobody is sharing this knowledge from the first group, right? They tend to talk to other people who know these things already. An assumed right? level already. Yeah. 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 And, 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 to, and also they would talk to, not all the time, but they would talk to them in reasonably academic. You know, a lot of it was kind of a little bit of, of one upmanship saying, you know, oh, I like this, um, you know, I like this photographer and I like that. I'm trying to find hidden people, you know, mm. is, is it, you know, it's like in music world. It's like, you, I, I'm going to know the really the avant-garde stuff that's out there. And I, only yeah, like, yeah. you yeah. know, I only like, you know, half men off this get And, um, uh, and, and so the, the people who were at the, the, the other end of the spectrum, who sure they don't all want to know, but some of them do. And, and I thought, let's, let's make some, let's do so. I want, I like talking about photography. I like talking with that first group of photographers about the things that I've learned at photo school, about how to 
you know, make your images a little bit more than just a, 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 a representation of what you see in front of you. And, and I'd, I'd, I'd been on the fence about, um, you know, about closing the studio prior to the COVID in 2020 and all that sort of stuff. Cause I, I wasn't really being fulfilled and I'd, I'd, I'd been in there for 10 years and, and doing family, yeah, kids, so. dogs and stuff like that, which was not really my cup of tea. Um, and, and I just went, I've, I've got to find a change of pace cause I'm, I'm falling out of love with photography. Um, and so yeah, 2020 came along and it was a, I was obviously not allowed to go in the studio. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had that decision taken out of my head. So I spent a lot of time at home, obviously during that, that, that period, uh, you know, at the garden working and going for walks and things and, and thinking about it, I went, do you know what, it, if I don't do this now, then, then the studio is going to open up again. And I'm going to be back on that treadmill. I'm going to be, and, because that was again. part of the problem. I was running to keep up. I was, you know, running to stand still mm -hmm. at the studio. So it was never time to do the photographic eye. You know, the fact that it took mm. me two weeks to make my first video. And I was just like, uh, I think I might need to rethink <laughs> this because it's going to take too long. Um, and then it got like 20 views. I was like, ooh, uh, yeah, we're a long way off. Um, so, um, so it kind of, that was, that was the, the, the impetus. And I went, I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to talk about things. Over time, obviously what I talk about is slightly more. Um, but it was really that. It was wanting to share the photography that I enjoy. The, the, the thing, the nuts and the bolts, not the nuts and the bolts, actually the opposite, the, the why of photography. The thrill that you get from looking at images. Mm -hmm. That there's so much out there that can inspire, that can make your photography so much more than just a tutorial about setting an f-stop or something like that you know that mm. that's all that people tend to share and and i just thought there's there's a market here there's a gap that's is isn't being fulfilled and and basically mm. i was just making videos that i wanted to watch ted forbes used to make some interesting videos you know back in the day uh you know about specific photographers and, and things like that. And I, I liked that, but he'd stopped doing those. And there'd been a couple of channels that were starting to kind of do these sort of things. And I thought, all right, okay, I need to do this now. So I sat down and said, how's it, how's it? Well, I didn't actually to start with, but you know, I sort of, I did all that kind of stuff and, and, and here we are now. And well, two things. First of all, being a photographer, did that actually help you in setting up and framing and getting a good looking video early on on YouTube? And, and how did you find getting involved in the world of YouTube? Because obviously it's something I've come to in the last 18 months myself. Okay. And it, so we it, talk it's, about the same. it's a weird business and it has its ups and its downs and it hits you hard some days yeah. and you think you scratch your head and think, well, that's good content. And yet it's doing nothing. Um, and I just wondered, I mean, I would have thought being a photographer would have helped you enormously at least from out of the fence, having a good looking video. So there was a couple of things. Yeah. I think that, that worked in my favor. Um, one was yes. Okay. So even though it took me two weeks to shoot the first video, mm. um, you know, I did the actual video part of that was not the problem. You know, I, I, I knew I, I've shot video before. Um, mm. so I knew kind of all those sort of things. Mm. Uh, you know, so even though, um, it was new to me, Setting it up and lighting it, all that sort of stuff, but that was reasonably Second easy. Nature. Yeah, yeah. I found all, yeah, I found the audio. <laughs> and it's still, it's still my Achilles heel. Um, the audience thing. I, as, as easy as I find f stops and shutter speeds and all that sort of stuff, um, I find audio just a, I, this is all just numbers. <laughs> oh, we, we <laughs> need to meet just... somewhere in the middle because obviously I know nothing yeah. about an f stop or an ISO, but. Give me a, yeah. a love rating or a WAV file and I can compress it, suppress it, you know, yeah, name it. No, 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 I can that. get noise out of um, things. Yeah. So, so that was kind of, that was easy. Um, I'd, uh, I, you know, as I said, I'd, I'd worked in the theatre for a little while. Um, mm -hmm. Not on stage, but as, as a group. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't overly fussed um, being on camera. I was a little bit stiff. Mm -hmm. so I was, everybody would be. Um, but also knew that would, that would 
come that would you know that would get better um the editing side of things was uh, it was learn as you go so that's what do you edit in uh da vinci resolve right so it was it was very in the end i was like hey cool you know mm -hmm. um and 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 i just sort of sat there i said like, i'm going to talk about richard everton and i'm going to talk about and leave it and and things that nature. so to start with I just kind of basically did biographies of, of photographers. I was very reticent to share opinions about things. I was, I was, um, you know, I was unwilling to, uh, uh, I was unwilling to, so we've got haggis interruptions. Haggis. <laughs> haggis. Come on. Off there, please, darling. Off. Off. There we go. Um, yeah, I was unwilling to kind of share anything that could be construed as me talking nonsense, mm -hmm. right? So I kind of, I learned on facts quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then very quickly discovered that, that um, you know, the facts are, are not facts. <laughs> you know, so you get these people crawl out the woodwork and say, I think you're fine, actually, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, so that was what I think. And, and then just, yeah, I would sort of promote the videos to, to my friends. And obviously I was fairly fortunate in so much as my friends uh, on, on Facebook, for the most part, are the sort of people who would watch these videos. Yeah, so it's of uh, interest to them. Yeah, and and so YouTube kind of looks at when okay, I, I get the audience. Whereas a lot of people just mm. show their video, like their gaming video, and and show it to their eighty-five year old grandmother or get their grandmother to watch <laughs> it, and they're like, and and YouTube just kind of goes, I what do you? I, I'm not getting it. I don't understand. Yeah. You know? Um, and and so it was all that, but yeah, learning the whole game of YouTube, learning bits and the bobs and stuff so it was it was a steep learning curve you know isn't it just and i think that's what people perhaps uh you know if you just click on and begin watching a video because of course when you watch anybody that's good at something it by nature looks easy and so you yeah, click on and you watch your favorite creator and you see the video and it's eight minutes long well how long can that take must be able to do that easily in a day you just yeah. don't realize the time effort research thumbnails tags everything that goes into getting a video made uploaded and hopefully to find a good public it's a, it's a yeah. it's I'm, I'm loving it don't get me wrong but it is as everything harder than one would imagine from the outside it, it, it yes it is harder than, than i think than most people think I, i'm fairly fortunate in so much as um what i talk about now um has morphed from these straight biographies mm. to slightly more a, a, opinion based pieces so I can pick up a you know magazine like like Frames here. Mm. One of my favorite ones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> plug there for Tomash, and and you know and flick through this mm. and and talk. I like to think eloquently, uh, you know, about some of the images in a way that is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so that's kind of fairly, you know, I I I, I think I'm extremely lucky about that. So scripting videos isn't quite as 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 intense as it used to be um back in the day and obviously i i you know i learn from other youtubers i watch what works for them and i watch mm -hmm. about all these sort of things and I, I found a style that works for me and it seems to resonate with with my audience mm -hmm. um, and that that's kind of the thing you know a lot of people i, I don't know you know your process for, for creating videos um but I, I've, I have found as I have increasingly gone off script, as it were, people seem to engage more with it. I think they find it's a little bit more. So, did um, you used to read from an auto cue? Were you formally scripted? You did. And uh, to, to start with, I had sheets of uh, A4 paper with my mm -hmm. horrendous handwriting scribbled um, and then stuck on the Stuck yep. on the tripod. Being there, done. Uh, if one of me, <laughs> yeah, and then and then I um I shelled down with auto cue, which again made a big difference. Um, and and even that, then I found it easier because I wasn't having to kind of go over things again. Mm -hmm. But it did feel a little bit stilted. It felt like I wasn't, I wasn't connecting with with the audience. So it wasn't quite um, Alex coming through kind of thing. Yeah. And, and yeah. now, you know, and also I was petrified, petrified of making mistakes. You know, I, I once did a whole video um, talking about Jacques Henry Latigue um, by calling him Latrigue. 
um, which is which is a thing that I've had since photo school days that I've somehow mispronounced his name in my head, and, and it was only at the end of the video I went, oh for God's sake, I have paused it. Yeah, I thought, do you know, I'm not going to re-record it. Uh, no. And so I just ended it, and I went, you know what? I put a little thing in the window, and I just said, "Who's the twit?" <laughs> and and that kind of seems to you know people seem to. to you know, they, they enjoy that when you are a little bit, yeah, you know, a bit more real. I'm but finding, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm finding that. I think one of the wonders of YouTube is that it lets people come into our lives and watch what we're doing yeah. and feel that association familiarity with us. And I think to be perfect all the time, as much as we want a lovely set and lovely lighting and it all to look professional, that's one thing. But to be yeah. too anodyne, all of the time takes yeah. away the beauty of YouTube and that personal touch, the personality that comes through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, there was, I, I found, you know, also it's interesting because you, you build up a community. I think this mm. is kind of, I think this is where a lot of, uh, a lot of people who sort of get into YouTube um, or want to get into YouTube um, sort of make a mistake that they're not, they're just focused on, oh, I'm going to get monetized, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. Where it should be about building a community. There's a Facebook group uh, based around the channel, which I did start, mm -hmm. but somebody else, a guy called Warren, he runs it for me. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and so there's, there's a community that's coalesced around the photographic eye, not me. Um, and, and I really like that, that there are people who are kind of you know, wanting to not worry about gear so much, more about so the wise, uh, and I see my job as more as facilitating that of, mm. of, you know, encouraging, encouraging some sort of thought, you know, and, and that's kind of, I think, you know, obviously it, it, I, I'm making a huge again, assumption in your area and you know, I'm talking about tech and, mm. and things like that, there is a kind of, it's a little bit more nuts and bolts, mm -hmm. I feel. But I, I still think that yeah, the, 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 the channels in that arena that do better are the ones that somehow transcend that. There is. It's yeah. a case of, uh, I mean, I, I'm clearly, I can't be, preach you, 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 your channels doing ever so, ever so well. But it is a case yeah. of finding your personality and your voice. And I think my mistakes early on were trying to do this thing of trying to be frame perfect the whole time and just yeah. blankly sitting there talking to a piece of glass rather than just yeah. enjoying it. And actually, the reason I started it was because I found it enjoyable to watch. And yeah, I yeah. find it enjoyable to make. And I think if you can be begin to put that over, people, yeah. it's your personality people are going to sign into. Apart from your knowledge, with you, it's, it's your personality, isn't it? They want to sit and listen to what Alex has got to say on that particular video about that subject. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. and I was, I was very surprised about that when I started. You know, that because uh, I, for, for the, again, going back to the theater days, I used to hate the vo sound of my voice. You know, really? Mind, you know, to, 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 yeah. Oh, it was like, oh my God, I'm, <laughs> it, it's horrible. Um, so I had a real issue with, mm. with my voice. And then even fairly early on in the channel, people said, oh, you know, I, I, I listen to you when I, I want to tread one. And, and, it, and I was like, hell, why are you listening to YouTube? <laughs> and some people didn't realize that actually a, a, a huge majority of people listen to YouTube, they don't watch it. Mm, mm. And uh, you know, so there was things like also when you put a quote on screen, please read it because uh, I don't know what it is. It, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So it, yeah, it is that personality thing. It is about freedom to to do your own thing to make mistakes, and that's a similar thing in photography. Is I I encourage people hugely to do their own thing, to not follow the rules slavishly. But that isn't the same as not caring about the rules, of not mm. understanding. If, if, if a video is just wrong, you know, it's like today, I can say I'm, I'm here using mobile internet, so the internet's a bit squiffy. And, and this, is, this is not a good look for a video. <laughs> you know, the, the quality, we don't try to <laughs> you think, um, you know, it's, you need to be careful. My first load of videos, the, the camera that I was using to, to film with was uh, a 5DS, um, which is not really great for video. I can't see that it doesn't have a flip out screen. I couldn't see what I was recording. It was also like, um, it doesn't, it didn't have remote autofocus. I couldn't sit down and have it, 
it doesn't have face tracking, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I would have to manually focus it, you know, and then go and sit down. And I mm. tend to do this a lot when I talk is back and forth. So my head was going out of focus and then I would shift forward ever so slightly. So the focus is actually my ear. I would do videos where I was out of focus or something. And I thought, as a photographer, I'm not <laughs> and this is all this. But it just goes to show that if, you know, if you can have at least the strengths of a personality to mm. overcome those hurdles, you know, I knew it was wrong and I could fix it. So now if I wanted to do something like that, as playing with an idea and, and in photography, then I can do it with intent mm -hmm. as opposed to just kind of making mistakes and saying, well, the, I, you know, it's art. You know? And there <laughs> you is know? your page just, with your banner heading yeah, and so on. Your, look at that, that handsome there you go. young film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so moving forward now, is, where do you see the channel going? I mean, it's growing really well, clearly. It's doing good things for you. Um, I, I would like to reach, obviously, more people. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's a fairly obvious, and it seems like such a knee-jerk thing for, for YouTubers to say, I want more views, um, uh, because right, quite bluntly, more views means more revenue. Mm -hmm. um, but I have realized that there are a lot of people who are thirsty for this mm -hmm. kind of dialogue, or to talk about photography in these senses, who connect with it, the intangible, in photography, you know, like you come from a sound background, that there are things in sound is very hard to explain. This is right, but this is wrong. This is, you know, there's a so so that's kind of one I, I wanted is to help people get more control of that side in the image making process. If they feel more confident in taking photographs, of going out on a limb, of trying different things that are beyond. This is how I make my picture look, tutorial version three mm, mm, or something, mm. to express themselves more freely. There's a passion the with you and your videos, and I, I would imagine that's what people are really buying into because it is, it, it's, it's honest and it's good information, but it's not drilled at you that this is the only way. You have a conversation on camera, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's kind of one of the things that it took me a little while to get used to it. On, on on camera, mm. um, but it once I tapped into that idea, when I actually kind of went, do you know what? I actually talk the hind legs off a donkey in real life, so maybe I should just, <laughs> just be, <laughs> you know, um, you know. Obviously, it needs to be edited down a little bit, otherwise my videos will be four hours long. Um, and and I thought, do you know, what? I'm just going to try it. I'm going to give it a whirl, and 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 people do respond to it. Mm. You know, they, they mm. sit there and they go, I really, your passion, you mentioned passion. Um, and, and, and people have used that word a lot when it comes to, to, to photographic eye. That people write to me and say, you've reinvigorated my love of photography. And, mm. and I think that's kind of why I want to reach more people. Because there are lots of people out there, somebody out there right now who's going, I, I, in a position oh. I was in. Yeah. 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 And how are you enjoying shorts? I see you post a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's another art <laughs> form for us to learn. Um, <laughs> um, I, I can't say I'm sold on them. Um, I, I think for some audiences, they might work. The reaction from my core audience has not been positive. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is another funny thing. There are people who, who kind of, they, you know, they go, I, I, I love them to bits because they are my core audience and stuff. But it's, it's interesting how personally they feel about the channel. You know, they, they go, this yeah. is actually, I don't do this because this is not right for your I'm channel. I'm invested. This I is, came to you for this. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so so it, it's nice. But, it, you know, obviously, you know, we do, we do need to try things out. We need to move forward. Absolutely. I have to find a balance between attracting a new audience. Exactly and, that, yeah. And, 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 yeah, and still giving that sort of, uh, you know, that, that kick to, uh, to the existing guys, the guys who, there are some people who have been watching the channel since almost its inception. You know, so when you see an old name, you know, and... Uh, Means a lot, doesn't go, it? Oh, my God, I remember. Yeah, it's like yeah. I remember when... When you'd be sitting there and you go, look, no, 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 I got a, I got a message. I got yeah, it. Yeah. There was somebody's yeah. moment. Um, 
and and you could remember, you know, when with, like when you asked me about, uh, you know, the subscribers, and and these days it's kind of like, it's something like, you know, but if we'd had this conversation like two years ago, I would have told you, it is exactly three hundred and twenty-one. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, so it is. It's a thing, but it's it's, it's a journey. Yeah. It's fun. It's, it's a lot of it fun. really is yeah. fun. And, you know, it's, I'm certainly glad I did. And it's, yeah, it's got days that you wonder why you're doing it. But on the whole, it's something I'm really glad. And, and once you peel back the layers and began to get into it, it just, it gives you more, it delivers more. There's more things to find out, more areas. And you never stop thinking of things to create and videos to make and things you want to talk yeah, about. Think- and funny enough, something you mentioned a minute ago there about what you happen to know from your knowledge Somebody mentioned to me, just because you understand that it's simple to do X, Y, or Z with an audio file, photographic world for you, doesn't mean that everybody understands it's that easy. Don't just assume that everybody's got that same knowledge. And that's what you're passing on. It's that, you know, you're debunking it. You're not making it something scary that's only for the elite. You're making it, no, you can do this. I can help you understand this better. And that's the beauty, I think. There is a warmth to your channel. Well, well, thank you. And, and I, you know, there's this, uh, I think you mentioned earlier, you said, you know, things happening for a reason and, mm. and things finding you, um, you know, as going right back to my, my beginnings in photography, you know, sitting with my dad and him explaining things to me mm. as, as a youngster, you know, like a five-year-old or four-year-old, and as I do with my son now, mm. that started me and I went, okay, well, this is somebody taking the time to explain it to me in simple terms. And then going to photo school and, and getting a grounding and getting a, 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 a far broader introduction to both the craft and the skill mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and what have you, and understanding those things. And then, you know, I, I was involved with this, I, I was involved, I have been with the Scouts for most of my life um, to the point where I, I used to run a, a troop here locally mm-hmm. and I would, I would pass on knowledge mm-hmm. and 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 so what's happened is i think we've ended up well i've ended up in this fortunately for me unique position where there was a gap in youtube for a specific kind of content i.e talking about the wise of photography that wasn't oversubscribed that wasn't overfilled saturated you yeah. know so you might i think at the time i you know i'm sorry there's people like sean tucker uh uh, T Hopper, she's kind of moved off into slightly other things now and stuff like that. But it wasn't big. There was a there was a there was a there was a, a, a yearning for it, and I happened to have both the background to enable me eventually just to waffle <laughs> about <laughs> it, and um, also the personality because mm-hmm. this is this is important. You you know from a radio from a you know radio background, there are people who are extremely knowledgeable about things. But they have all the personality of a damn flannel. Yeah, it just doesn't you know, sell. Doesn't and you see this on YouTube. You see people who have so many interesting things, useful things to say, but, oh, my God, it's like <laughs> watching paint dry, you know. Um, and and so, so I was fortunate about that. And it was just something, yes, yeah, so it was like this happy accident of all yeah. these things that have been shaping up to this and, and I'm extremely grateful that um, you know that I did actually sit down in front of that camera and um, and in the words of Sync Media just just got it playing that will it record as are 138,000 other people glad that you sat down as well so I mean I'll be, I'll be, I'll be glad to I'll be, I'll be linking your, your patron site and Facebook page everything where people can find you I'm sure they've already subscribed to your YouTube channel but I'll be sure to leave yeah, yeah. that in there as well so loads more videos coming up from you then um yes I'm, I'm trying to find a so I've got some things on the burner for the next year yeah. Um, uh, and possibly another channel I mentioned about the studio um, or the shooting space rather mm-hmm. um, here, here at the house. I may That's do a great name for a channel. Like, the shooting space. I well, like the shooting space. It's a brilliant name for a channel. <laughs> um, it is a very good name. I shall I will credit you. <laughs> Get in there quickly. And, um, Get the channel made before somebody takes it. Yeah, I'm going to register a domain and a whole sort of thing. Um, so that I would like, because, you know, 
the 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 portrait side of photography, I re I really do enjoy now. I I'm mm. very much into it, but the personal portrait portrait with let's call it a capital P. Um, and despite the fact that you know I was terrible interacting with people, that I would avoid it when I was a youngster. Um, the, one of the things we did not get taught at photo school, also at all, was how to interact with people. As and there was so much in there that I think people people get scared away from portrait because they don't know how how to create an image. You know, beyond can you do this? <laughs> well, again, <laughs> yeah. I would imagine um, that the, the skill set behind doing that is similar to the skill set of sitting down and watching, I was watching Louis through last night. Now, if there's a man that understands the art of interview, <laughs> yes. it's the way that he can just make people feel comfortable. And, what, and that's what you have to do with a model, isn't it, on a set. If you can, as you said, you've learned the skill now of interacting with that person. And that must make a massive difference of pulling the best out of them, I would have thought, and in turn, it, it, giving it, you the results you want. It absolutely does. It absolutely mm. does. And, and one of the, the, the things that sort of has come, come along is that you have... If you go back and you watch my first videos, mm. right, they are kind of, well, Richard Avedon was born in America and he joined the Navy and he did this, and he did that. Um, and they're a little bit stiff and they're a little bit, you know, whatever, but that's, you know, sort of fine. Part of learning. And, yeah. yeah, and that's kind of like how a lot of people take, you know, take portraits, mm. that they will be presented in front of somebody who is more often than not, um, I'm talking about the sitter. Barely nervous, especially mm. if it's if they're photographing their 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 parent or you know their their wife or one of their children or somebody they know. Mm. That person can be anxious. Mm -hmm. So it's your job as a photographer to to make them feel relaxed. So you go from the hi, hi, Alex, and I'm going to take your photograph today, right? So I want you to do this. I want you to do that, right? To kind of like. This thing now, you're sort of like, hey, you know, man, this is so cool to see you. Did you find this place? Okay, lovely, right? How long have you been doing this? Oh, this is your first time. Awesome. You know, things like that. It's a far more relaxed, sort of conversational sort of feel. Um, and, and I want to help also people try and get over that mm. and realize that you know, studio photography, you know, being in, in, in a controlled environment, photographing people is not the scary thing that I thought it was. Uh, you know, so certainly between 2010 and 2020, <laughs> that's where I made all my money. I was, you know, <laughs> um, but so that kind of world. So, it, so that's kind of part of, you know, having some other things come out. And, but I don't think that's quite in keeping with um, the tone of, of the photographic eye so much. Yeah, I think a separate so channel two, probably two. does speak volume. It makes sense to, to separate the two out, but equally keeping the core of what you're about in that second channel yeah, yeah. so yeah. so it sounds like an exciting 2023 for you then Lots uh, going on. it should be I'll just, i just need to get through the rest of 2020 <laughs> i'm off to scotland next week to photograph a family wedding and then there's obviously christmas yeah <laughs> and also well so, i will yeah. let you get on with your day alex so i've taken up enough of your time but thank you ever so much it's been fantastic catching up with my first photographer on, on the podcast i'm really chuffed that we could have oh, this well, conversation thank you. and, and I, I, look, I look forward to uh, to seeing what you come up with it's your camera. <laughs> <laughs> yes let's awesome say you're going to be getting a lot of hits on your channel i think <laughs> <laughs> so, thank Alex. you thank you ever so much for having me it's on it's been fantastic awesome. thank you so much indeed cheers